We're joined now by legendary human rights campaigner, activist and master of the art of the citizen's arrest, Peter Tatchell. But tonight, it will be me arresting him, using my questions. He has the right to remain silent, but if he does, it's going to be a shit interview. Peter, welcome. Delighted to join you. Uh, it's good to have you here. Peter, you're a man who's, who isn't scared of anyone. Um, well, hang on. There are some people I'd be scared we've of. We've seen you in action. You, it's fair to say you are prepared to take on power. Uh, wherever it's being abused or wherever you see injustice, okay? Uh, what do we do about ISIS? The army of men in a faraway country, they're willing to die to deny us our freedoms. What are we going to do? Because let's face it, a cuddle isn't going to work, is it? No, and um, it's very strange how they, a lot of them wear dresses. Mm, yes. Um, but overall, I think, yes, ISIS is a major threat, first and foremost to the people of Syria and Iraq, but as we saw in Paris, also a threat to people worldwide. Um, the way we defeat them, I think, is first of all, challenging their ideas to stop future generations being radicalized. And there's a really important role for schools and universities to play in that sense. Mm. But also, of course, we need to be helping the people on the ground who are actually defeating ISIS on the battlefield. And those are, of course, the Kurds in Syria and uh, Iraq and the new Syrian Democratic Forces, which is the coalition of Kurds, Christians, Assyrians, Turkmen, Arabs, and others, who've all come together around a secular democratic goal uh, to use military power to defeat ISIS on the battlefield. What ISIS and, and other you know, religious fundamentalists in that part of the world have been claiming is that Islam is under attack in the West. Are they right about that? No. Um, I don't believe that the misadventures in Iraq or Afghanistan were based on a hatred or desire to defeat Muslims. It was about challenging tyranny. Now, I didn't agree with either the Iraq war or the Afghan war. I think both were mistakes, and we should never, ever, ever repeat them in Syria and Iraq today. That's why I say we shouldn't barge in. We should be supporting the Syrian and Iraqi forces the democratic secular forces who are most under threat from ISIS and who are leading the fight against ISIS. They are successful. They deserve our support. It's not up to us to go and interfere and intervene. Uh, let's talk about the politicians here at home. I sometimes think, and it's a, it's a bad, almost unspeakable thought, is that they're secretly part of them happy when things like this happen. The Snoopers Charter, we were talking about that a couple of weeks mm. ago. There was a lot of resistance to it. My instinct is, is if that cat had come up this week, it would have sailed through, no one would have opposed it. Uh, so there is a sense that it gives politicians opportunities to sort of make inroads onto our human rights here at home because we're kind of happy to have that done at times like this. Is, is that the danger? Absolutely. You know, ISIS has set a trap. You know, if we overreact with a crackdown on civil liberties and freedoms, Again, we're doing exactly what ISIS want. They don't believe in democracy. They don't believe in human rights. So if we circumvent our civil liberties and human rights in the name of defeating terrorism, to some extent, they've won. Mm. So, you know, you don't defend freedom by undermining it. Ah, but fight, fight, freedom is both a goal to fight for and a way to fight. But Peter, do you think that politicians need moments like this just to make us fearful, turn us into their automatons like that little robot Hoover in Breaking Bad, you know, the sort that don't need controlling. Mm. Um, there's an element of me that has a sympathy at that point of view, but I, I don't think it's actually a grand conspiracy. I think it is just that many politicians have this mentality, the West knows best. Mm. And I think, you know, it isn't just the West, I think, you know, Russia, China, lots of countries often take the view that we know best. I think we need to get away from that and look at these issues in terms of international policy and in terms of the interests of the people in those particular countries. Well, Peter, it's been a pleasure and honour to have you here in the studio and hear your thoughts on the current situation. Thanks ever so much for joining us, Peter Tatchell. Thank you. Good stuff. Um,